Friends, in theory, I am live. Hello, hello, and welcome, Sword Friends. I did not plan to do this, but uh, I was watching a video, sitting down after finishing a backsplash project, which, incidentally, chat, if uh, if problems are existing with the doobly-doos and the, the internets and whatnot, please let me know if you can hear me. Um, I haven't reacted to a video. It seems a very YouTube thing, but I haven't I haven't done it yet. But I was watching in the first couple minutes, it seemed like there were a lot of points that I was like, oh, this would make a fun video. Oh, this would make a fun topic. Oh. And so I figured, well, why don't I just go on the internet and watch it with some friends? So plan is to watch a video from Shad uh, about the difference between a cheap versus an expensive katana and which one is better. Uh, I do want to also note, I'm not 100% sure like, I understand the terms of free use, and I intend on, like, talking over it and pausing it and stuff like that. But um, go watch the video, please, from, from Shad. I've linked it in the streamy thing. Uh, I think he makes some good points, or at least I think that's what he makes so far, and I enjoy his content. So go give him a like and a subscribe if, if you're keen on doing that. And I hope I'm not stepping on any toes by making a live stream and watching it but I absolutely encourage you to go to his channel, support him, watch him, uh, do do that kind of stuff. Uh, before I get going, Samurai Bird, Voltage, La Chat de Luna, hello. Thanks for joining me. I, I'm i glad you're here. I'm not sure all who is here, but we'll see if, uh, if all this malarkey works out. What's the best way to make this not totally just stealing somebody else's video? This one? Yeah. All right. Uh, I have my speakers on too, so let me know if this is echoey and stupid. Uh, if it is, then I will I will try to adjust. But like I said, I haven't played a video on a StreamYardy broadcast before, so I'm not 100% sure how this is going to turn out, but I kind of want to watch the video, so hopefully it's good. First point, agree, right? Money doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy swords. Swords equal happiness. Uh, and that brief little snippet, if any of you are hearing an echo, again, I got like speakers and microphones and wangus going on. So hopefully it works out. Hopefully, hopefully it's good. Oh, chat, what's your two favorite? What's your favorite steel between T10 or 9260? Depends. Uh, I like T10 for differentially hardened steels and 9260 for through hardened ones, but I don't know that I, I would reverse them or have any actual experience. No audio on the Shad stuff. Okay. All right. Let's see. How do I fix the things? Audio. Yes. share sounds is this whole concept just not gonna work this is a great problem to solve not live on the internet but here i am Stop sharing and then share screen. For the share audio checkbox. That's what it tells me. Window, blam. Entire screen to share system audio. All right, in theory, Yeah, I guess they'll hear themselves. Okay. Maybe this will work. Tell me if you're like hearing extra double fun. 
place. And that makes me happy. And you would want to know, you would want some confidence as to what amount of money you spend gives you the quality to achieve the happiness you want. Yes. But all of the money. That's the answer. You need to spend all of your money on swords. If you don't have a rack of at least 12 behind you, you're doing it entirely wrong. Uh, all right, before I drive everyone crazy, sounds good. Bam, sounds good. That is fantastic. I'm glad that it's not no double, just normal. Excellent to hear. This whole YouTube -y stuff, I got it nailed down and figured out. 100%. All right, let's but go. There is a limit. Like, I've spoken to people before. They're like, oh, just spend the most amount of money you can on the sword, and you get the best quality ever. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. Exactly. But they are so determined. You know, in, in fairness, I haven't necessarily heard the same thing. It does seem like a lot of customers, at least that I talk about, uh, or at least people that I talk to, seem to understand there's deals to be had and things that will will be better for the money and worse. Um, the, the perception that I tend to get more isn't just that if you spend more, you get more but that if you spend more on folded steels or some sort of fancy kind of steels that you get more. And that, that I've found doesn't always bear fruit. But um, most people that I've talked to don't necessarily inherently assume price just equals quality, though I could, I could certainly see that, that being the case. I just haven't found it to be particularly prevalent. All right moment to think that it does yeah sometimes people act uh, incidentally uh before i go again i know some more people a lot more have have joined uh this is a video from shadowversity i was watching it I, I got about two or four minutes in or something like that and figured you know I, i've there's been a lot of points already brought up that would make a fun video why not just watch it and react i have no idea if i'm stepping on toes from shad so if if the man himself has any issues, I will absolutely take this video down and uh, apologies in advance if that's the case. But I think React, uh, hopefully it's not just stealing his his cool content. But I encourage you to watch it. The link is in the description. Uh, Shad and Nate and Tyrenth all put out some, some cool stuff, have some cool thoughts about swords. And I've watched their content. Uh, they've been making a lot more short stuff lately. And I've been really digging it. And I think they do... A service to the community. I think they they share a lot of cool information. So I would encourage you to watch it if you haven't. Um, just as more people join the chat, I'll I'll say I'll say that again. All right, on with actually, the. Actually, you think money always buys quality when no, actually you can get ripped off. Mm. And so we have had someone reach out to us, katanasword.com, and they said we would like to send you a katana for you to review. And then I went back to them and I said, okay instead of just one sword send us one of your most expensive swords i would so i've had some luck with review samples in the past myself um just a a, a tip to shad would be to ask for uh three to five lately for review samples that's kind of been what i'm asking for is between three but not more than five and that's more or less for my own production-y nonsense stuff uh one to three gives me some idea of what the vendor's capable of. And I love what Chad is saying. Yes, for something cheap and something expensive. That's kind of what I like to see because it gives you an idea of the range from uh, that vendor and what, what they're capable of. And it also allows a viewer to see, hey, if I spend a little or a lot, what, what do I get for that money? And for me to compare my, my tenured history of experience with swords uh, to, what I'm, to what I'm seeing. So um, I like that, but Chad has... He's, he's uh, a much bigger dog in this particular YouTube pond. And so I would imagine that two is, is quite a small uh, small amount of, of samples. If Andy's got a team of people that might be able to, to test and do more than I can. I'm presuming some stuff here. Don't know if that's the case, but sometimes I get between three and five. That's typically the amount of samples I look for when I, when I get something from a vendor. It's not always the case, but... Uh, I certainly prefer it. And at a mere 30,000 subscribers compared to well over a million for Shadowversity, uh, I would I would suspect that the, the benefits of sending a few more or the ask would, would not uh, fall on deaf ears. And one of your cheapest swords, and we will I love review the cheap them one. and compare both to see the quality Ooh. difference. Now, we and have so. a bit of a history of... And the concept of this video is fun. I'm really glad that Shad asked for a cheap one and an expensive one. Uh, Inherently in the back of my mind, and I don't I don't necessarily know if he addresses this later in the video, but it sounds like they're both from the same manufacturer. And I don't know much about this manufacturer, but I suspect uh, from from having seen a few more minutes into the video that these are 
like probably not a forge directly, but a manufacturer that buys component pieces from a number of various distributors in Longchuan, China, and assembles them and sells them as, as a brand. But I don't think they, I could be wrong, but I don't think they manufacture them themselves. That said, you're still getting like a, a sample from, from the manufacturer themselves and not, uh, not necessarily the, the market by, by comparing these things. And that's, I mean, what's this video? If I look at the full screen, it's 21 minutes long and you can't, I mean, I made a video where I tried to just give some blabbery words and it droned on for about an hour comparing all the various sword manufacturers out there. So I don't think it's feasible to, to compare everyone out there, but it is a sampling from, I think anyway, one, one vendor. Uh, comparing katanas to other swords, and we, we enjoy doing it. We do, we do. I enjoy katanas. I'm a big fanboy of katanas. I don't know if you've heard this, seen this. <laughs> the, uh, Shad is a bit anti-katana, if we're being honest. Okay, he's still, he's still like, you know, I, I so. always <laughs> said, he's I love always. katanas. What's the best sword in the world, Shad? Well, well, that's another video. <laughs> Side note, I know Shad gets some grief for not necessarily liking katanas. Uh, one of his earlier videos, and I've, I've been a subscriber of Shadiversity, uh, since it was called I Am Shad, and I think I was like around subscriber 600 or something. Um, but he's he's made a, uh, a series of videos really, really far back about like the truth about Katana. It's like an eight part series that explains some of the metallurgy behind Katanas. And I thought it was really educational and cool old school Shad diversity stuff. So uh, I don't think he would hate them if he dedicated so much that I guess people dedicate time to things they hate all the time. But I don't I don't think he hates katanas. I don't think he hates katanas. <laughs> it's the katana. The thing is, though, I don't like things misrepresented, and I address misconceptions. All right, hang on. I'm going to try to... Well, which is a better martial arts... Which martial art is for for a blade is better, Aido or Kobudo? They focus on different blades, generally. Uh, Iaido is a lot of katana, and Kobudo does a lot of, of other stuff, like a ton of other stuff. So I'd imagine they they focus on on different things. Iaido is, is very, as far as I'm aware anyway, focused on on the the sword. Um, I think a, a more rounded martial art, perhaps more applicable, would be Kobudo. But yeah, depends on on the flavor of stuff you're you're looking for. Anyway, back to video. Options in European history, long swords. It's just that there's a lot of misconceptions about the katana, which has caused me to kind of focus in. Well, we've got that misconception, or one of them, right here, which is money, and the more you spend, the better quality you get. Ooh, we've got two examples to actually test this out. And in addition to that, people usually, as a regular thing, say, when you're testing katanas, seeing how, how good they are, they say, well, a traditionally made katana oh. is going to be much, much better, before much better, because of the ingenious way it was made. We've addressed So Shed does address it. Please go to his video and check out the links and stuff that he, he goes to in this video. They're linked again. Um, traditionally made swords, though, are uh, easily misunderstood when it comes to this type of content. Um, there's, if you commission a blade from a licensed Japanese smith and get something that qualifies as Nihonto, uh, and it's made with all the traditional malarkey, then you're, you're going to get one type of kind of deadly art, if you will. Um, and then there are also blades that are made kind of, w well, more or less in, in a very similar capacity, right? They're, they're more similar than they are different out of China, and they're drastically less expensive. Um, but they're, they're also quite a bit different, generally speaking, because they're, they're not thousands of dollars, and they're not, there's not a license. You definitely get something that is uh, quality-wise a bit different. But... Um, People often see like, hey, a, a Chinese blade advertised for six hundred dollars on the internet as Tamahagane and a, a you know ten thousand dollars sword uh, that's a Shinsakuro out of Japan or but something Nihonto wise that you could commission. Say, well, they're they're both made of the same thing, so they are the same thing, and they're they're not. That's that's not necessarily the case. They may not perform the same way. I have very limited experience testing with any <laughs> with any degree of like uh, aggression a Japanese made blade. I've, I've swung them around. I've used them for Iido. I've, I've practiced with antiques. I've cut with antiques, but I haven't intentionally tried to push one to failure as I have many times in, in Chinese reproduction swords. So I, I don't know that I can really, from a firsthand perspective, compare and contrast the two, but I can say that they are different things, but often conflated. 
many times people will see a tamahagane blade out of Japan or tamahagane blade out of China and think they're the same thing and they aren't necessarily the same thing. All right. That misconception a lot already. Well, we have a katana here that um, hits a lot of look, katana sword. This one here is the $200 one. This is oh, the cheap one. Uh, we'll just grab this out. I feel like we should add, before we say, say anything about the blade, the Sayer looks um, cheap. Cheap. It, yeah. it, it, so the, I think uh, Tyrinth mentions this, that the, the fittings are kind of uh, <laughs> prolific and that they're used in a lot of different swords and not necessarily that different. The Saya has uh, a lot of similarity to a, another other Saya that are out there. And I think a lot of forges make a blade. Um, some folks make various brass fittings, Hibaki, Suba, Fuchikashra, et cetera. Some people make handles, wrap them. Maybe another factory makes Saya. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know the exact supply chain of how this goes, but I think the there's a manufacturer that makes scabbards and sells them uh, to people that assemble them into a finished product and sell them on the internet. So I, I doubt that because Katana Sword, which I think is the name of the company making the, the swords for this video, uh, actually made the scabbard. I've seen the pattern before, and and it does. It does feel cheap. At the same time, um, many of those cheap scabbards function, you know, acceptable for, for the money. And bearing in mind that you get a, in this particular case, what looks like a $200 sword that appears functional, for that $200, you get a sharp live blade that's capable of cutting things and doing sword-like activities. By contrast, a Japanese-made Yaito, which doesn't do those things and is just for drawing and sheathing and practicing Yaito, uh, is is often starts at a, at a higher price point than that. At you know 300, well, it's 300 a while ago. With inflation, it's probably more than that. Um, so, $200, it's fair to not necessarily expect much. I suppose is my very long-winded point there. It, like, well, it's, it's the cheapest. Got, it looks like you've got brush strokes and just yeah. So yeah, it's done. This is a three hundred dollar katana from. They, they say it's cheap. I do want to point out. I say that kind of stuff too. I do want to claim that I, I don't think I could actually do any better. It does sometimes look cheap, but it's an order of magnitude better than anything I could make. Katanasword.com. Wasn't two hundred? I think it's closer to three hundred. Okay. Yeah. Um, three hundred. And it's a battle ready one. Now, there is some comparison to be had here with a previous katana that we had, which was mm -hmm. around $300 to $400, and that mm -hmm. was the Baylor Arms from our Cult of Athena. Oh, that was a nice sword and before the, you ruined it. Yes, mm -hmm. the quality of that sword is like actually that. pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. This, uh, mm, well. Ah, sword Friend Scab is here, and I think the burning question on everyone's mind, and if the zombie apocalypse happened, what's well, still... <laughs> Scab! God damn it! <laughs> Coming in here with your inside jokes. You know it's a seven scab. You know, you know what it is. You know what it is. You're dragging everyone down with these shenanigans. Goodness gracious, my friend Scab. Choir Boys Outdoors, incidentally, plug for Scab. Go check his channel. Uh, there, we're, <laughs> we're all lost. We're all lost. Uh, uh, there are some um, things that are obviously cheap on this sword, it's not about like uh, it's the not fittings. About okay, the Suba. Like, it's obvious, it's metal, but it looks... This kind of looks like the Michonne Suba, like the, the Walking Dead Suba. It looks, like, plastic. Well, it looks plastic, but it is actually metal. And uh, there's a couple other things like this ray skin underneath the... That's um, fake. That's it, fake. It, it yep. looks really... I've seen a lot more shift towards fake ray skin. I think there was a little bit of a scare or at least some sort of problem in importing genuine ray skin. Uh, in my day job, I deal with customs and compliance a little bit and importing any kind of natural leather or ray skin is is sometimes problematic so i'm not terribly surprised that there has has been a shift toward ray skin um i don't know if it's ever discussed in this video but one thing i i would like to see if they're using some sort of cheaper alternative or fake ray skin is to give it a full wrap instead of using panels like i don't if if the cost of the material is not prohibitive uh I'd love to see the structural enhancement that comes with a, a full wrap of, of ray skin. Really bad. Um, the wrap isn't terrible. Yep. We've got to talk about the tip up here. Yeah. This uh, grind line here is actually a yeah. fake one. A higher quality katana is actually going to have a geometric mm. difference yes. where you can see the and angle feel. and that's actually being ground on. But 
Other than those, the blade is actually, you know, adequate quality steel. It's battle ready, it's sharp. It and so I'm actually quite interested to see how the performance is on this for being one of the more budget range katanas. Bear in mind, you can actually get much, much cheaper katanas than this that are mm. like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, and those are truly dog crap. But, you know, just, just to call out here, I've tested some much cheaper swords in the $50 range and they they were okay. I mean, dog crap, I'm not taking them literally, but just for fun, I will take them literally. If I had dog crap in my hand, I have one shot to throw it at your face and hope that you're so disgusted I can run away. And uh, the sword was an order of magnitude better than just throwing feces at a person's face. It was a lot more deadly. It held up as a sword. I have a video on it somewhere on my channel. Um, I've, I've made some shorts about it. And anyway, it was a $50 Musashi Katana. I think they're like $60 now, but I digress. The point is that uh, it held an edge and it did sword-like activities okay. And it was absolutely not a great sword, but it was also $50. And so your, your expectations have to certainly be tempered. But um, if you were okay at sharpening, like if you felt confident in sharpening and you had a little bit of spray lacquer or wax or something to kind of make the, the Ito a little bit more tight, it did okay. It was fine for cutting bottles in the backyard. It held up to a lot of punishment. It didn't shatter into pieces or do anything really terrible. I think I cut a laptop in half with it. Anyway, it did sword-like things just fine, and it was $50. To add, to be fair here, the, a lot of the fittings you'll get on those $50 katanas, like mm -hmm. the Hibaki and Subaru and things like that, are identical. But in fairness, I do want to point out, I've never tried throwing dog shit at somebody and seeing what happens, like, if that's better than having a sword in my like sword the other person has a sword and instead of a sword i have a fistful of poo and i chuck it at you. i've never i've never actually tried that technique though in sparring once uh many moons ago in a screamer uh i was i was sparring with somebody significantly better than me and always got the better of me and i knew it but i still learned a lot and just i, I would sometimes do like a uh you know like some sort of crazy maneuver and one time i did just throw my stick at him and charge at him and try to take him to the ground. It didn't work. He batted it out of the way and then beat the shit out of me. Um, and so metaphorically, if my stick were poo, I would have I would have lost. But you wouldn't be able to bat poo out of the way. It's, anyway, not the point of this video. <laughs> like they're actually just the same, which is uh, an interesting point because we have our expensive katana here. This one here, it's you'll see, but it just feels like, a bit. Oh my god! I can't even get the thing out. It just feels a bit wrong. Yeah. I actually like it. Uh, uh, there's a couple of things I don't like, uh, but I actually like a number of things on this more expensive one. Uh, the Seiya, yeah, I hate. Well, well, 50, well, 50. well, we were using, well, I was using it before, and uh, I actually, it is very grippy. I really like how grippy it is. Really? However, I hate the look of it. It looks very. Uh, so I. I don't know if this is like a real Samegawa Saya. It looks like kind of what I'm seeing here is a full uh, a full wrap of Samegawa on this scabbard that Tyrant is holding. And if you had that, I mean, very rarely do I bring up history. It's just not not my forte. But uh, as I understand, Samegawa was a very expensive substance to have in, in you know, feudal Japan. Um, that's one of the reasons that you see panels, I think, is not... It is basically to imitate wealth, um, but ideally they would they would be wrapped fully with it to, to get some sort of actual structural benefit fr from it. Um, if it's a panel, then it's more of a decoration than than like a structural part of the, the handle. And a, a full wrap of Samegawa or Stingray skin on the scabbard is, is a much bigger skin and more expensive and I think would be a show of wealth, at least as I understand it. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that's like a walking around town kind of bling, but I believe it would be some sort of show of, of wealth historically. Uh, I could be off on that. From a practitioner standpoint though, uh, stingray skin is, is pretty rigid. So you you might have seen stingray skin like on a wallet or, or somewhere else uh, where it's soft and tanned a little differently. But on a sword, the stingray skin is, is extremely rigid. It's like a rawhide almost. And if it's wrapped in that rawhide substance around a sword, then it becomes really difficult to, to cut and really difficult, you know, pretty, well, 
it makes the scabbard more rigid. So in Japanese swordsmanship, you don't take the scabbard out and, you know, hit the guy with the dumb end. It doesn't act like a, a stick to hit somebody with. Uh, in theory, it could, but it would make it more rigid to, you know, not break if you fell on it, not break if, you know, you hit the ground or something with it. Um, it, it wouldn't move around your obi particularly well. That, that skin acts almost like an abrasive, like sandpaper, and it would hold in and maybe tear into your clothes a little bit. But it, it is a lot more difficult to, to cut through as well. So if, if it's filed down a little bit and lacquered over, then it makes it a lot more difficult for your sword to cut through the wooden scabbard. And if you're drawing from a Japanese style sword, you draw from your hip and you kind of slash in one motion. It's a, I don't know, some, something very commonly understood is, is applied in Japanese style swordsmanship. Very often, uh, people will cut through the kind of top portion, the mouth of the scabbard as they're drawing because it's easy to apply force in the wrong way. If you kind of move the scabbard before you fully draw, drawn the sword, it's easy to cut through the, the top portion of the scabbard and sometimes into your hand. And that samegawa provides an extra bit of protection from your sword to you and makes your, your scabbard a little bit more resilient in that way. So it is, if that's real samegawa, like a, a pretty useful thing and historically like a, a thing that happened and and certainly um more expensive uh what's going on here excalibur a thousand dollars expensive that's about medium range for katanas uh are going for a new yeah a thousand dollars i think is certainly considered expensive to a lot of people i think a thousand bucks is is maybe the price point where people really start expecting perfection personally uh it may not be fair to expect that at any price but I think a thousand bucks, anyone that's buying a sword for that is is thinking they're in high-end territory, even though it may may well be. You're not gonna punch me with a kitten in my hands. <laughs> Ooh, kitten, one hand kitten, one hand poo. The stingray hide is used on swords, stingray pelt is used on wallets. Is that what it's called? That bird, I think that's the difference in how they're tanned, right? I'm not entirely sure. Is $1,900 for a Sino T10 redone Suka antique Edo period fittings worth it? Well, a T10 Sino sword can be had for around 300 bucks. Uh, so depending on how spectacular the rest of that is, it certainly well could be. Uh, a fully redone mount of Edo period fittings, it could easily be 500 to 1000 to you know, $5,000, depending on the quality of fittings. Um, or, or certainly even more than that, but also less than that. <laughs> and the quality of the mount could be very mediocre. So uh, it's hard to say, but a uh, uh, Jeku or Sino sword, they used to be around 300 bucks. And if it's redone with a much nicer mount and fittings, uh, possibly, but I'd, I'd have to see it. All right. More shit. Shiny and like Diamante. It looks like diamond. It looks like sequins. Yeah, it looks, it looks, like yes, it looks cheap. But to actually hold it, it's actually really nice. Exactly. Very a, a scabbard with sequins sounds kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. Just like a rhinestone cowboy scabbard, all full of rhinestone blinged out. That sounds fun. Except that it feels a bit plastic. You've got a million dollar idea. Except this here. Oh, yeah, you there's, like a little, there's like a little nipple yeah. injection bit there. I don't know if that... So the Emperor node theoretically could be on there somewhere, and that might be um, the, the largest node. Usually it's like somewhere higher, I think. Um, but what do I know? If it felt oh. a bit more organic, like a leather or a snake skin, I'd be fine with it, but it feels very plastic. So interestingly, Shad is the cheap one. Um, the, the cheaper one, he was kind of touching the blade, and, and here he's he's placing the blade on his on his sleeve to not, you know, touch it and get oils from his hands on it. But it, I, don't, I have no point to this. I'm just noticing that he's treating them a little bit differently. He's treating the expensive sword like an expensive sword. So a couple of things, right? This one has a thinner handle. No, so, uh, you know, actually, um, I have here's a sword, just just to ha to have. So if you're looking at a sword, the, the way, um, and I'm certainly no expert in Nihonto, but generally speaking, the way people look at swords is you try not to breathe on them. Uh, if you're a heavy or moist breather, maybe wear wear a mask. It's a little bit more normal than it used to be. Uh, but you might hold the sword up to a light and look at it thusly or pick it up and examine it, trying not to breathe on it. If you want to talk, you take the sword and move it out of the range of your face, speak to your to your friends, the person who owns the sword. Um, and you don't generally, you know, I guess, touch the blade, but you bring it up and 
you can examine it and usually there's some reflection or light or something like that that you're looking at it in uh, but there there's a whole etiquette to looking at Japanese style swords. Uh, they have shows and whatnot with Japanese style swords, and I'd encourage you to certainly go to one. I think there was one in Orlando. It might be going on now. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, uh, Japanese swords are, are readily available in antique form to see. There is an etiquette to, to looking at them, and you will probably make people very upset if you, you know, thumb the blade and look at it and get all handsy with it. Uh, so I'd, I'd encourage you to look up how how to handle the swords before before doing it. But fortunately, they're available, and you you totally can. I don't remember exactly what what my point was, but yeah, he handled it a little differently. Shadowversity uh, should start to get a very very clear about it is that it doesn't matter if it's a katana, mess or longsword. It just it's just work. Steel durability depends on a good blacksmith and good steel. Uh, I mean, to, to an extent, I, I think a lot of people look at steels as, you know, like, I don't know, like any other spec um, for a product that you might buy. And unfortunately, how well it's worked is, is not something you get to find out until you put it to the test. And not a lot of people do. Um, reputation of, of Smith is certainly important. And that's I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree necessarily. It is, it is more or less just work steel. Than the other one, which I actually like. I feel I can grip and get a better hold on it as a result. Can I, can I hold that for one second? Mm -hmm. Notice anything mm. similar about it? Okay, okay. So, um, Tyra, that's a good point. That the habaki is identical. I know how much it costs. How much does it cost? $20. No, that's wait, Australian. Wait, so, wait, like wait. $10 US. But even so, that's $20 retail after everything else. If you're a manufacturer, that's like... A dollar, two dollars. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the fittings on both. I I don't know for sure, but I would speculate it's it's be well below a dollar, and I I would speculate they probably cast them in in very large bunches, uh, and and do some minimal grinding and then uh, sort sort of etching or painting to get this pattern in there. I wouldn't imagine that this would even cost a dollar each by the by the end of it, uh, from a manufacturer's cost standpoint. Both of these swords, 1,000, 200, 300, 500, they're all the same fittings. They're all from China. They're mass manufactured. These fittings, even though, yeah, probably cost just about as much as make, they look nicer. Wow. These are nicer. So on, on various websites, you can find that they do have like a grade of these fittings. So I believe they're bought from a fitting supplier in, in Longchuan, China, as, as are the Saya. I believe, um, and I think that the suka very often are as well. But um, the the point is they do they do have a grade. Oddly, I tend to favor the cheaper uh, side of things. The like very plain iron cast, simple looking, simple looking fittings. I think they they get a lot closer to the the pieces in the past, like a really degraded set of antique fittings. I, I think they do a better job replicating that than they do replicating some of the really high-end side of things. So the, the items with uh, gold and silver detailing, often I, I think they, they look a little meh. I've, I've mentioned that in like every video that I see them in. So I, you probably don't need to hear me say that again, but uh, there is a grade. They do have varying costs and usually the higher end ones are made out of like cast copper and not some very uh, mediocre alloy as well. So they're, they're usually, uh, <laughs> a pretty substantial amount of metal, if nothing else. And I'm sorry if I'm missing chat. I'm focusing on watching this video live on the internet. So if I miss chat, I, I apologize. Uh, do they even have specs on the blades, such as their respective points of balance, dimensions, weights? Seems like this video is just really lazy, low effort. I don't, I don't think, honestly, I don't think it's lazy or low effort. I think they're, they're talking, uh, They've got two really. They've got two examples from the same manufacturer, which is great. They've got three different minds, kind of three different sets of eyeballs looking at it, making points, and they're not coming at it from like a really in the weeds katana perspective. But th there's a ton of people that are out there just interested in buying a sword and don't need to 
to know every granular little bit of nuanced point of balance detail. Like if you actually care about where the point of balance is on a sword, you're, you're probably in the weeds a little bit more than the average buyer is already. Um, and, and so I know I talk about that kind of stuff a lot in my reviews and I'm well in the weeds and I'm talking to people who are in the weeds. And I think Chad just has a broader audience and he's, he's talking to the audience that he has. Uh, also I would, I would note, um, I don't know Shad particularly well personally, but he strikes me as a person that's handled a fair amount of swords and as a reasonably intelligent person and as a person who's liked swords for a long time. So I wouldn't be surprised if his level of in the weeds knowledge is maybe higher than he gets into in the in the videos. And if if my suspicion is correct, it's probably actually the reverse of a low effort, <laughs> low effort production that it probably takes a lot for him to not go into the weeds and really be pedantic about things and and go into nuanced, uh, tangential stuff. Uh, I could be wrong though, I could be wrong. Anyway, on with the chat. So looking for Well, kids. my standard for this is something like a European sword. When you mm -hmm. get them, the cross guards and pommels are custom made mm -hmm. for that particular piece. Yeah. These yeah. are all just manufa uh, mass manufactured. It is interesting, like if you were to get a thousand dollar armor sword, you would usually expect the fittings to match the price range and quality of the sword. And so even though I actually do like the look of the fittings on, on this more expensive one, I have to acknowledge they have cheaped out on the fittings on yes. this. Thank you. And he, he's he's noting something that I, I might put a little differently here, and that is that blades out of China have, have really gotten quite good. If I look at examples from 25 years ago or so that look like they were, I don't know, ground out on a, on a round wheel, had scratch marks and lines and, and vaguely had the silhouette of a katana, but none of the weight, none of the dynamics, no traditional construction of any kind, very, uh, very lackluster on the elegance of the swords kind of thing. Um, now you can get a really splendid looking differentially hardened blade that looks more than just in silhouette like a katana, but actually functions like one and has a lot more in common with one than it than it does different. Obviously, there's still differences. There's still ground to be gained, but a lot of the ground is more to be gained in the fittings and, and fit and finish side of things than than in the, the blade itself. You really get a lot for your money in comparison to what you used to. If I think about when Paul Chen started to make swords, like some of the first like good mass production swords were $1,500 20 something years ago. And now a sword that is Arguably, a, a much better looking, feeling <laughs> sword from Huawei is 300 bucks. Uh, <laughs> so it's like electronics and that it's gotten like better and cheaper, which is uh, there's there's just not a lot of things like that. So um, anyway, more okay. shit. An area they didn't cheap out on is the blade. The blade. To be fair, I actually like Bohe's more personally yeah so i'm not really into this blade profile per se well like the i, I prefer the boat which for those who don't know that just means like a little fuller a little mm -hmm. i'm gonna call it a blood groove it's not a blood groove but a little fuller yeah i actually so w w what nate is saying um kind of the low effort comment earlier this kind of tells me who they're talking to if if you're calling it a blood groove just so that you're speaking the same language but trying to add a little bit of context and that that's not what it's for that, that tells me that these folks probably know a little bit more and are, are, are speaking to a little bit more general an audience that, that may have a, a more passing interest in swords than somebody in the weeds. I, I would venture, I guess, that the vast majority of people that watch my channel are, are a little bit more in the weeds, but I also talk about almost swords exclusively. <laughs> so, so it's no surprise that I've, I've cultivated an audience that is a little bit more dedicated to, to just the, the sword itself. I checked out a few of your other videos. You look different with your hair longer and beard. Wasn't sure if you were the same guy. I am indeed. Same asshole face, just a little less, a little less uh, hairy. We do like, you know, that version as well. But My wife not hated so it. much. Um, what I Absolutely. particularly like, yeah. and we'll have close-up footage of this blade. This has laminated. I only kept it for steel. three years. You can actually see the laminations in the. All right. Um, so if this is supposed to be a laminated blade, I don't see it. It could be the camera work, but I don't see it. Oftentimes there's like a lamination-y line that comes through and it's a little bit more evident and kind of rides along the edge. It could well be there um, and it could be 
camera work, it's it's photographing a mirror. It's a pain in the ass to, to show that, um, but I don't see it. I do see differential hardening. That's what this kind of wavy hamon is here. And then I see folded steel. Um, there's a hata pattern kind of running around these, these kind of grain structures running around appear to be folded steel. And I see some effort and polish because this back piece looks like a mirror. And then this is a little bit more opaque. I can't remember what the name of the, it's like a Hayuza, Hayuz something. Polish is what they call it. But I, I do see like some, some amount of effort taken in the, in the polish. Blade. But I don't and see that lamination. Just and then. Why lamination on katana? That's some goofy novelty steel sword. So uh, let's see. So lamination, uh, separate it in your mind from folding and think of laminating and folding as two separate things. So folding is you take your steel and you fold it over and it gives you this kind of wood grainy pattern. And there's a history around why they did it. But visually, you can kind of see this layered pattern on the, the surface of steel and that tells you if it's folded and that might be the same steel kind of folded on top of each other sometimes it can do that the impurities may may give it some sort of visual look of a, of a steel or you might have two different steels kind of folded over each other and that can give you some sort of kind of visual but lamination typically refers to different steels with different properties put in different places on a sword to in theory enhance performance or maybe just aesthetics uh, so if you think of San Mai, you could have uh, an outer type of steel, uh, usually a, a lighter or softer steel that's easier to bend, absorb shock a little better, and then a core or a middle part of the, the blade uh, would be some sort of harder steel that would likely hold an edge a little better, but maybe not take shock as well. And in theory, by combining the, the softer steel on the sides and the core of something a little harder, you get something that benefits from edge retention and also absorbs shock a little better. And so when, when you think of lamination, at least in, in swords like this, Sanmai Kobuse, which is like a, a taco where the outer edge is wrapped around a core steel of something harder. Uh, there, there's various types of lamination. There's various charts that explain what they are. But in theory, you have different steels that do different things better uh, positioned strategically in a sword to maximize uh, a performance characteristic and give you better edge retention and better shock absorption than you would have by using just one, one type of steel. And from a, honestly, I, I'm not smart enough to tell you if in a modern context that bears, for, it, you know, is useful anymore. I, I don't know, like in theory, it seems like it could be, um, but I, I don't I don't honestly know if that is still a useful technique to do anything because it seems like most of the really high performing modern steels tend to be a mono steel that is through hardened very rarely in like really high performance blades whether it be in competitive blade sports or in some of the most abusive testing and, and what holds up to, to that kind of shock well you don't typically see those blades made from any kind of laminated steel and i would i would think you would if it had any use but i could be wrong anyway more shit and this is an authentic differentially hardened you can tell by the way that there's a distinct different kind of you know shading look on it it has a geometric you know ground in tip now both of these uh blades have a live edge mm. so we are going to be testing both of them to see which one is worth your money to well, be honest you know people say they're like ah, oh, this is a, a folded katana is going to perform so 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 much better than uh you know a cheaper version this is the thing though he's bringing up a point that i kind of noted a little earlier and we're into the territory that i haven't i haven't really seen so um I don't know that people necessarily think, well, people do think that a folded katana is better, but usually because it's more expensive. So I, I said earlier, a lot of people don't think that just because it's more expensive, it's better, but folded swords are better. And I think that because that's more expensive, people associate folded steels with like a, a performance thing that must be better. And better depends on, on what you're actually after. Um, if it's aesthetics and hard work and that like kind of handmade-ness uh, or historical tie is useful to you or uh, something you're looking for, it certainly takes more skill to make a sword. 
out of folded steel and it takes material that could is probably more expensive and yada 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 so it, it costs more uh, whether it be materials or labor i think it's it it's just more of either one but that doesn't mean it like stands up to punishment better or holds an edge better or is is from a performance characteristic better modern steels are usually better quality than traditional steels I will put the caveat, this isn't traditional steel. This is modern steel that has been folded and differentially hardened. Which means it's actually going to be a little better than Tamahagane that's been mm -hmm. folded because it's not going to have little impurities throughout yes. comparatively. And that might be a shock to some of you people who love the katanas. Traditional Tamahagane, I'm not saying Tamahagane that comes from Setetsu that is sourced through modern means, all right? Because if you get very pure Setetsu that's sourced through modern means, it's going to be very pure Tamahagane as a result. No. Tamahagane that's made from traditionally sourced setetsu, which is iron ore sand. And, and if you don't have magnets to be able to pull out the iron from the silicates and stuff, it's going to have a lot of impurities. That's the reality. That is the truth. We need to figure out. I think he talked to more nuance than I necessarily know, but I've, I've seen people test Nihonto, like shooting guns and stuff at it and whacking stuff pretty hard. And the material itself, I think when it's made by somebody profoundly competent that really knows what they're doing, you get a lot out of it. But at the same time, I had a $500 sword from Cloudhammer that I whacked into a metal pole lots and lots and lots of times, and it held up really, really well. And I would venture a guess that a $20,000 traditionally made by a very competent smith sword would probably not hold up as well to being whacked on a metal pole as this $500 sword made out of S7 would. Um, and so uh, Tamagane can be really excellent steel. It can cut well, it can do things well. And when it's when it's put in capable hands, uh, it, it can really do, you know, it can, I, I don't think it's uh, unfair to say that it can surprise you in how durable and resilient a material it can be. At the same time, um, I think you can still get better for a lot less if your definition of better is being whacked on a metal pole in some dickhead's backyard <laughs> and, and being whacked several more times. If that's your definition of better, then then better can be had for less money. The test. So, of course, cutting test, yep. but also durability test against wood. That sounds good to me. Uh, thrusting test, but I don't expect too much difference in that. When you say thrusting test, Chad, does that mean we have to bust out our old Betty car door? That's what I named her. <laughs> That's used to me. Yeah, I just don't worry. I just don't worry. I just came up with the name just then. It's a good name. It's good. I I do the same thing in testing. So this is a little bit of pot calling the kettle black. But um, Tyrenth, he he does a good show of his of his cutting, and I know he's not trying to do like traditional swordsmanship stuff. And I I do like in testing. He kind of has a pattern that he follows, I, there's just a lot of overswing. Um, there's, there's, he's, he's swinging pretty hard. Not that he's wildly uncontrolled or anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not in a position to critique him as a novice myself, uh, but it, it would be nice to at, at some point, see them do some cutting where, where the blade kind of stops in a position where uh, it, it's still in a position to, to be used as uh, defensively or, or at least to, to, to give some some gap. So if you're swinging at bottles, pool noodles, light targets, um, they're they're a little bit more, I think, a, a a material that seems to favor a really sharp edge. And and so if you swing hard, sometimes you can mask that a little bit. I do it too. I, I test swords, I whack bottles, and every time I get in front of a camera, it becomes Hulk smash. So I, I totally get it. Uh, as a viewer this time though, I I could say that it'd be great if he stopped the blade kind of right in front of right after it, he cut through the bottle and metaphorically if there was a person that was using a sword and he he lopped an arm off this would kind of give him the ability to maneuver or or defend himself in such a way that if another oncoming blow came he, he's not you know his arm wide out and creating a, a big gate uh, a big gap or opening um at the same time, though, I, I do want to point out that, like, I'm really not critiquing his form. Like, if I if I look at it, he is also, I've seen a few different Shadowversity videos, and he tends to follow a pattern. And because I've watched a few of them now, I kind of get a feel for how he cuts a little bit. Uh, the same with Nate. And 
And so it, it a little bit better lets me judge how sharp the sword is, which incidentally, this sword seems sufficiently sharp. It's popping bottles apart. Um, So the the pool noodles, I those pool noodles are nice. Incident, they're a little, they look a little thicker, thicker than the ones that I get. Um, but pool noodles noodles are are a deceptive target. They just kind of if you have a dull sword or a, a sharp sword in bad form, <laughs> um, they just kind of wave around and, and laugh at you. And if you have bad enough edge angles, they just kind of bounce around. Um, so. You have to have reasonably good angles and a, a pretty keen edge to to pop them apart like this. Uh, they pop apart a little easier in cold weather, but Australia, I don't think, has cold weather, at least not not the way I might define cold weather. So uh, I'm guessing they're not they're not frozen, and <laughs> and and so the the sword like reasonable angle. Nate seems to follow a little bit of a different pattern, but he he swings hard and then kind of like soft sometimes. And at least I can see, and I I appreciate the similarity in pattern and force that that Tyrant seems to put. Um, but I can also see that Nate just kind of bitch slaps, <laughs> for lack of a better word, the target sometimes. And it helps to see what what the targets do when you just kind of let the sword do do the work. Now, you wouldn't necessarily just kind of throw the sword out there like that at someone. But there are strikes in, in various systems where uh, you move and kind of quickly, you know, move the sword up and, and tap somebody kind of hard on the wrist. And, and it's a bit like a bitch slap. But uh, if it gets at your flesh or, or cuts through your whatever sleeve or cloth you might have across your arms, uh, it's, it's enough to make you bleed and cut you pretty deeply. So uh, those, those light kind of slappy cuts, while they're not necessarily intended to lop your arm off. Uh, they, they can absolutely do a lot of damage. I, I, I do find them useful to see. Well, that went kind of about as expected, but really, I see what you mean. That does feel lighter in the hand. It does feel different. This one does feel lighter. This is the $1,000 one, mm. and that's the $300 one, 200 It feels lighter. Well, you know, um, there are... Bird, swords, katana certainly can be used in two hands. And in fairness, though, in most Japanese style systems, there's a fair amount of one handed strikes. And so um, I think uh, Nate in particular has a little bit more of a background in Hema and a 28 inch blade that weighs about three pounds is a little bit more like a one handed sword. So it, it's certainly possible that he feels more comfortable using it as a one handed sword than a, a two handed sword. Um, I, you know, I can't, I can't say for sure, but I can certainly say that there are a lot of one-handed strikes with Japanese style swords too. So using them one-handed is not like a disqualifier, or at least it isn't to me. Uh, soft targets to gauge sharpness. Do they cut harder target? We'll find out. There's still a pretty good amount left in the, in the video. Snipe it. A two finger, two off. Finger too off sounds debilitating to me. Yeah, uh, most of the the little things aren't necessarily hits to the hand, though they absolutely could be. A lot of them are, are cuts to the forearm or inner wrist, which you know I'm, I'm told there's some important bits in there. I've never seen anyone use a katana like that. Weird. I, I mean, I don't think they're they're going. Um, Bert, I don't 
I don't think they're not advertising themselves though as as traditionally chain trained Japanese martial artists. Um, but the, I don't think that that necessarily disqualifies them from evaluating if a sword is good or bad, uh, particularly as they're comparing, you know, a perspective on is it worth it? There may be some trained Japanese martial artists that are, are trying to evaluate it and hopefully they can discern uh, some useful factoids from seeing somebody not, you know, not, not in a traditional uh, school or, or using it in, in a way that is maybe a little bit more familiar. But um, I kind of like the perspective of, of just people that dig swords swinging shit <laughs> around and, and seeing what they like. <laughs> Fair enough, Bert. Whatever it is. I'm a little disappointed in myself. I couldn't get the second cut on the thousand dollar one of all things. In terms of handling, they honestly felt identical. There was really no difference. No, and I'm kind of curious if they cut a lot more stuff. So when I do cutting and the like, uh, not all the stuff that I cut goes in the video. I trim down, I don't know, like 16 hours of footage into 20 minutes. Um, so there's there's a lot of cutting that sometimes I I fast forward through you know bits of it, uh, but you you generally don't get to see. But I'm I'm not sure if they only cut like a limited amount of stuff or not. It's because it would seem to me that cutting a bottle each is not or two or three bottles like isn't and one pool noodle isn't sufficient to. I mean you can make observations about it absolutely. Uh, especially if you've handled a lot of swords, but that's that's not a ton of stuff to cut before. Yeah, I, I admit you're Still right me. with that. Yeah. The weight you can feel, but as soon as they start moving, it's negligible. Yeah, this one is like you said before. It does have a little bit of a different weight distribution. It's a little bit top heavier than this one, whereas this one's a little bit lighter, which I prefer to be honest. But, but as soon as they start moving, yeah. it's it really is like you just you wouldn't be able to tell which one you're holding. Got another test. Yeah. How destructive are we being this time, though? Uh, we're going to be destructive. We're going to be doing our dreaded wood test. Now, mm. when we do reviews, we usually do on European swords, because we've only really ever reviewed European swords, we use a wood test to finish things out. Now, you are not supposed to use a sword in this way. No, no. And they do destroy them. But, I mean, that is the point of it. We're putting a, a sword, now an Eastern sword, up against something that's really not supposed to, which is a solid lump of wood. So we'll just power up and see how well... So to, to folks that watch me, wood is not where I, I, I call wood debatably uh, abusive. Now it depends on the wood. If they're just, if he walks over to this tree in the background here and just starts slapping any, that I would, it would argue is certainly abusive, but conceivably swords should uh, be able to survive striking at the shaft of yari or spears um armor has been prevalent in japan for a long time and while while if you're studying a system that is uh teaching you to use a sword against a person in armor you're going for the kind of gaps in armor you're going for the belly area where the sash is uh you're you're going for kind of the stitching underneath where where typically the plates and stuff are where the silk is sewn together you're going underneath um the i can't remember what it's called there's the kobudo the mempo i think there, there's some shoulder thing or or neck piece where you're trying to slide up and get at the throat you're going for the armpits you're going for the inner thighs um and so a lot of those strikes are are based on like where the steel plates aren't but conceivably people move and it's hard to hit a moving target so somebody might move you could strike an iron plate you could strike a spear shaft you could strike another sword uh there were i i don't know how uh, common shields were in Japan, but you, you may strike somebody using something as a barricade to prevent you from striking them. And so wood just by itself, not that it should come out the other end without consequences, but I, I think a sword should, should be able to handle that kind of activity. And while, while it is more on the extreme side of use, it's certainly like a, a, a thing that the, the thing should be able to do. It's a it's an activity that it should be able to to run in for for a time. Well, they hold up now. Usually, when we do the dreaded wood tests, we're using spring steel blades, which go back to their original form. However, with a katana, because it is def uh, differentially hardened, 
it'll most likely take a set. We've seen this twice now. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so for those who don't know, a set just means a permanent bend to the blade. Um, it does have... Permanent is, I, I take issue with what Nate said there in permanent, you can straighten them out. Usually as they bend, they become more susceptible to bending and uh, they, they, but you can straighten them out. Um, there's jigs to, to do it quickly. Uh, you can take them to your knee and kind of straighten them out. And arguably that, that means like, hey, in, in the heat of a battle, if your sword bends, uh, if you can find a spare moment, you straighten it out on your knee and you're, you're back in the show. Uh, so to speak, even though obviously swords being sidearms and whatnot, but uh, they, they do bend, but they bend before they break. And I, I think that's more, well, I guess I don't know the history behind why they continue to do it because it remained popular for, for quite some time. But it's it's not necessarily permanent. You can straighten a sword. You can straighten a sword. a little bit of spring to it, but not as much. And they're much more rigid. So uh, let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. It's time. I believe in you. You can do it. You can hold up. Okay, so 30%. Again. Whew. Wow. Well, that was all right. That wasn't Pretty too bad. No, so the first cut was like 10%. I yep. feel like second one was maybe 30, but I didn't expect it to go that deep on 30, to be honest. Now this is the $300 Katana and yep. it is my turn. Oh, okay. Well, you'll probably also need. So and like why it goes in 30% or when you're saying 30, why it went in when he wasn't striking that hard. It's good. Uh, he struck in the right part of the blade. It looks like he's going um, with the grain of the wood a little bit, like he's cutting in it at an angle where it's, he's not going horizontally into the, into the grain of the wood. That helps a little bit. And by the look of the wood, I, I don't know for sure, but it looks like it's damp. Um, and all of those things can factor into it, cutting in a little bit deeper. Interestingly, it seemed to have stopped here where the wood dries out a little bit. And he also seemed to cut kind of on a corner a little bit. Sometimes sometimes that can help too. I've whacked a few two by fours in my time, but regardless, it did cut reasonably deeply. And from the angle that I see here, it appears, it yeah, appears straight. Just in case. Thank you. Good luck. And so far, the sword is still fine. We have no damage. All right, 50. Oh. <laughs> the stuff falling apart and having to reset every time you film something. Something I'm familiar with. All right, so there's there's a cut here. He cut into a knot as well. It looked like it looked like he cut into a knot. No, that's forward. So there's a knot here, cut here. Is he cutting into a knot? Those are hard to cut into. Bonk, so chuck. we are kind of making a katana look magical. So wasn't exactly our intention, but it's it's an honest review. And honestly, this this blade is still perfectly fine. We haven't taken any chips out of it. In terms of the fit and finish, the Suba is coming a little bit loose. Yeah, I can hear that. So just as a note, the, the habaki being made of brass is a softer metal than the blade. And there's little shoulders that rest on it. And it's pretty tightly compression fit often when you get it. So if you're whacking into hard things where the blade is flex, uh, flexing and there's a lot of shock going into the into the blade itself, um, it's no surprise that the, the shoulders of that blade are pushing on that brass and things are going to loosen up a little bit because the rest of the metal parts on the, the sword are softer than the steel on the blade. But good news is it's pretty easy to fix. Uh, you know, a, a couple wax uh, with a nail set usually will push the edges of the suba in and and make it tighter so it's not the the end of the world to resolve if you hear those rattles i would just say that like while they're saying hey it's rattling now after whacking a two by four that's not necessarily outside the realm of very reasonable for a japanese style sword for a european sword it's a little different they're peened on um the the steel handles or the steel blades which are hardened usually go into like a mild steel fitting, but it's still steel. Uh, oftentimes, well, there's differences in hardness. Uh, they're, they're at least a little bit more equivalent than brass and they're peened on and they're, they're a little bit tighter. Uh, the, the Japanese swords are constructed a little differently. You have to maintain them a little bit more. At the same time, you can disassemble them to, to do that. Where in contrast to European sword is. Uh, now these are cheap fittings. I think less, we, less, I think that's a bit clear, but easy to do. 
I'm actually surprised at how well this blade is holding up. Well, it is also homogenous steel. So the yes. question is, can the $1,000 katana do the same thing? Because it's not... Now, T Tyranth mentioned that he's surprised here. I don't know that I would be surprised. Everything seems pretty copacetic in terms of what I typically see for swords in the two to $300 range that aren't hot garbage. Um, a bend wouldn't have been crazy, but uh, maintaining an edge, whacking and cutting reasonably deep into a two by four without uh, without visible or at least very tangible edge defamation, um, not bending on doing some debatably silly things in your backyard, all seems about on par with what I typically see for swords in that price range. Though admittedly, um, Ito loosening is, is pretty common there as well. That's something I, I would typically see. Uh, so th that's that's worth noting that a lot of times that will happen if it hasn't happened here, which they haven't mentioned, then that's that's a good thing. Um, yeah, though I, I suppose when I test swords, I don't I don't know exactly how much they've used the sword previous, but I usually train with them a little while, and so uh, they've got a little bit more mileage on them before I go and whack them into a two by four. But a lot of times the Ito on really inexpensive swords will start moving around uh, the fittings, loosening, but blades holding up not not terribly surprising. Uh, ideal. It's a good thing. Uh, it's Maybe you're not necessarily surprised when they fail either, though, given the price point. But the fact that they got a good one doesn't is, isn't necessarily outside the norm either. Oh, it's folded. It's differentially hardened. So it's a different beast. Let's give it a go. Mm. That was, it felt happy. So they weren't swinging very hard. That I mean, it didn't look like they were swinging as hard. Yeah, it that really actually did. felt Ma worse. maybe a quarter. It's kind of hard to explain because we've just used the three hundred dollars. Oh, look at this! It's, looks like it's all Ito's. Meh. I didn't notice that before. I don't know if it was like that before, but it looks like the Ito is a little wonky. A katana and the three hundred dollar katana. It sort of cut it a bit like an axe. It actually felt. It felt like it had power in it. Yeah. That felt like it just reverbed back up the handle. That's the perfect mm. way to describe it. It actually felt like you were feeling it in the handle, which I did not like. No. Uh, so we're going to do this again. Two-handed. Two-handed. Mm. Pass, pass. All righty. So if they're feeling it two-handed, sometimes because the, the handles are sometimes wrapped by or made separately, I guess I'll say, from the sword and they're not necessarily fit, um, if the tang is thinned out in such a way that it's too small for the handle and put on, uh, there'll, there'll be reasonable amounts of space in the handle. And then when you strike something, the, the Nakago or the Tang will move in the handle and kind of slap you in the hand. And it's just a little bit, but when you're cutting into things like two by fours where the blade completely stops, all that force travels down the blade. And if there's any gap in the Nakago, uh, that being the Tang of the blade and the handle that goes around it, and there's space, then when you hit something that <laughs> that handle kind of slaps the side of the the or the back of the Nakago and you you feel that in the palm of your hand usually especially when you do it two-handed you really start to feel it there i'm surprised they felt it one hand because they're holding it pretty high up they're not holding it lower where where the the slapping tends to happen or, yeah, in my experience well they hit it pretty hard too all right so he's hitting it hard just as as a if uh tyrant nate or shad ever happened to see this video uh not necessarily in this particular scenario, but in the scenario where you're really swinging for the fences and you don't necessarily have the ability to kind of like get your vitals out of the way, uh, highly recommend wearing something to to cover up. I've had I've had now a few swords uh, fly fly back at me, and uh, fortunately, after the first one, I was prepared to receive it. But the way this um, this thing, uh, the the mechanism that they're using to cut. Basically, like if the blade snaps and there's enough force, it's possible that it's going to fling it right back at you. So uh, I'd, I'd recommend if you're going to swing with any gusto where you're you're not kind of even even though it could break on a smaller strike, you, you still have like a little bit more control. But when you really swing hard at something, you're, you're kind of committing yourself to doing it. It, when I do that, I, I really don't have the ability to get the hell out of the way. Not that I do anyway, but it's also coming back at me with a lot more force. And I, I just, uh, I hate to see any anyone injured. So uh, I throw, <laughs> hopefully they have some armor now, but I throw something. It doesn't come back with like a huge amount of force. So some amount of neck protection, 
uh, a fencing mask, something, something. They've got eye protection there for like little splinters and stuff that come off. But if the blade shatters, then um, it can it can make for an uncomfortable uh, life experience. He's swinging pretty hard too. Okay, so. In uh, differentially hardened blade is probably going to be misaligned. Difference not forgiving. Yeah, it's it's not forgiving generally. Yeah, uh, swinging correctly is more effective. Swinging incorrectly leads to damage the weapon. I mean that's that's a fair point. The the thing is like if you're cutting a stationary target, then it's fair to say that if you're swinging correctly. But if you imagine like a person bobbing and weaving, and you're trying to trying to cut them, and they're trying to cut you, like getting perfect angles is is going to be going to be a, a a tricky tricky thing. So a sword that's more forgiving is certainly a, a more useful sword, I think, in in that scenario. I think even a skilled swordsman would have have trouble very cleanly cutting somebody that was really trying not to get cut. In terms mm. of uh, so, how much so. force yeah. you can put into things? I think the results are really clear. I yeah. split a two by four in half with really not that much power. If I'm so I don't, this, this wood, um, it looks similar. This looks recently damp versus the other one maybe looked a little bit more soaked. Don't know if that makes a difference. Yeah. And, and if we are, Ah, to be honest, maybe it chopped a little deeper on the other one, but the chop was only a little deeper. Power transfer is what killed that piece of wood. Yeah. Uh, and Well, the, the other one also had some cut down here. Uh, there, were, there were previous cuts on the opposite side of, of the wood, which make it crack in half a little bit more. They did mention that the sword was lighter, though, and, and so that um, may well mean that there's, there's, you know, it has less authority in the cut, so to speak. This just didn't feel very good, if I'm being honest. Now, this could come down to just the handle construction, but that doesn't make sense no. because the fit and finish on a $1,000 sword is higher than a $300 sword. Well, Tyrant is making a point here that the fit and finish is higher. doesn't necessarily mean it's more comfortable or holds up better. Um, <laughs> it might be more zazzy. It might have more stuff on it. And you'd hope that it would be in always better, but uh, in performance, that, that isn't necessarily the case. And... I see another problem. There is a wave right along there, and there is a set along the blade. Now, something to note with the set mm. is we actually, it took the set in a different video. We actually put this up against the long sword. We mentioned this at the start, and it, it took a set. It did, and we fixed it as best as we could. Now, that does mean it is a little bit weaker, yeah. but I feel like it's bent a different point. There. Yeah, now it feels like it's actually not only bent a bit, but it feels like it's actually warped, warped. a little bit. Yeah. So that that's not, Super weird. I would note, though, that as they're looking down the sword, if you think about it in contrast to a perfectly straight sword, uh, obviously it's not as good. If you think about it as a $1,000 sword you just spent money on and now it's bent, you're going to be sad. If you think about it, though, as a, a person defending yourself in a battlefield, it's still a perfectly viable weapon. Uh, it's still straight. It's still sharp. It's still easy enough to put the pointy in in the other guy. So it's still a, a viable weapon after whacking a, a two by four. And so conceivably a two by four, that's quasi, it looks like the, the apparatus they're using is tipping over. So it doesn't seem to be like fully braced into the ground. But uh, if you whack a person, it seems like they may, they may have a similar or even less amount of, or more give than, than the, the two by four did. And if that's the damage that you could expect, uh, while well, there might be some edge defamation hitting like the iron plates on armor or something like that, uh, that, that's still reasonable to think you could straighten your blade out after the battle's over and and go on with your day, but it's still effective. If Shadowversity is trying to say the reason for the first two planks broke is because the sword, the $300 sword is better than the $1,000 one, failed, failed at theirs, that would that would be dumb. I, I, I guess I haven't gotten to that part yet. I don't know if that's what they're saying. Yeah, uh, and the edge specifically as well. Yeah. Now, do remember, this is $1,000. And if we're being honest here, we're, we're having some problems with the fit and finish now. Because mm. in here, you can feel rattle. the tang moving around. Uh, the fit super is real. Yep, super, super is kind of, rattling. Like, we've got, we've got issues all the way up this uh, this, this, this piece. So, in the event the, the tang is slapping you, the good news again here is that if you experience this issue... Uh, Sometimes like taking a bit of tape and wrapping it around the base of the Nakago, uh, wrapping a sheet of 
like printer paper, like a single sheet of paper, sometimes a little bit more. You have to be careful what you stuff in the Nikago because it can be really hard to clean out. But sometimes just like wrapping a sheet of paper around it and then putting it back in the hole is enough of a shim to tighten things up again so that the Nikago doesn't doesn't move around and you're you're right back in action and it's tight and ready to go again. Uh, so th those are things that can be remedied. Um, it happens on really expensive nice swords as well, but it certainly happens quicker on these mass production swords out of China. The the handles that they make for them are not are not they're not filled with resin, right? They're they're they can come apart quite often. I don't know if these are. They could be filled with epoxy or something, but typically they're not. They're made to come apart, and they're also not made for the tang that they're on. Uh, they're made to like a, a kind of template or standard and then put on and kind of tapped on with a rubber hammer. And if it's too loose or too tight, you know, fuck it, <laughs> it's gotta get out the door. So sometimes you see cracked handles, sometimes you think, see things that are loose and there's a little bit of variation usually with, with within even the thousand dollar sword. So uh, the good news is if it's loose, you can tighten it up. If it's cracked, you can, it's a, well, it can also be addressed, but it's harder. Uh, and you just have to be careful how much paper you put on it when you put it back in, because sometimes the paper gets stuck. But uh, the point I'm driving at is that the the rattly tang can be addressed if that's if that's an issue. And I guess the rattly tang doesn't surprise me if that was slapping in the hand and made it uncomfortable, because it does feel very strange when that handle is is rattling around. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean the like it's broken. It usually means that the the tang is misfit. It could mean though that one of the pegs is is broken, but probably not. Uh, if it is, it's still probably functioning, and you can replace them with uh, a new a new peg or something. But I I doubt that they were both failed or something like that. Peace now. I feel really confident about the cheap sort. Penetration. I feel like as a YouTuber, I'm missing a car door. Like I just need to have a car door around. These edges are the ones straight from the wood. So mm -hmm. whether they're sharp, these edges are the ones hey, straight. Come back. Hey, there we go. Um, so this looks like the differentially hardened blade, and the tip took a little bit more damage, assuming that they were the same. But you can kind of see some of the some of the. Uh, differences here in terms of profile. It looks like this is a little bit cleaner Kasaki because it's differentially hardened. It was probably quite brittle up here and it chipped off more. This one seems to have taken pretty, pretty minor damage. And the shape of them, this looks like it would glide in a little bit easier in contrast to this, which looks like it thickens out a little bit more pretty quickly. These edges are the ones straight from the wood. Mm -hmm. So whether they're sharp, dull, whatever, or in between. Bent. Yep. Uh, we'll be born out in our cut tests. Yeah. We're both going to do it like we did before, just... A couple of cuts. Yep. See how it goes. Just a few flowy cuts and see if it works. We'll see if this thing just flops around now. And yeah. we've got a couple of water bowls out of test as well, so we'll see how that goes after the pool needles. You want now, to go first? I'm going to start with the $300 because that was the one that took it like a boss. Yeah, it so did. So let's, uh, let's give it a go. Okay. Like a boss. We followed the same pattern. I don't know if Nate... Well, it wasn't so bad, but... Let's try it with the other one. 300, 1,000. Mm. Oh, okay. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, my. We don't need to watch. I'm going to... No, not... I'm going to remove this and then mute and then skip the ads for you. So you can just see my pretty face instead of ads. All right, there we go. We're We're back. We're back. Oh, no, I fucked it up. There we go. Maybe it does fall in the same We finished up all of the testing for today. and the Nate, I, I really like that they both do it. Tyron seems to be a little bit more consistent in the, the way he delivers it. Nate varies a little bit more in terms of where he strikes, but I can kind of tell that he's, he's doing a bitch slap. And I, I like, I like the two, I like seeing two different people cut. Um, if only, if only I had a team of people that would help me cut stuff for for reviews. I, 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 I'm surprised at how useful I find two different bodies, two different people moving moving the blade around. It gives me more perspective on the 
the capability. Either way, both of them seem sharp at the end. The results have been really surprising. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. So I got a couple of bad cuts, not exactly having the greatest day, but when I went to the $1,000 Katana right at the end, they were clean as anything. A nice cut, a very mm. nice cut. Nicer than I got, actually, with the after we're talking about the wood edge at least. Yeah. And yet, when we went over to the wood, it, it was the complete opposite. Yep, the $300 Katana performed Beautiful. wickedly. Beautiful. Wicked. And then the $1,000 Katana felt terrible. Like We're trying to explain to you that it wasn't just how the depth of the cut and no. the, the, you know, how the sharpness of the blades, things like that. It was definitely the feel, like it was just energy transfer. It yeah. felt like the, the cheap blade could transfer all of its energy to the wood. It just felt like it was reverberating back in the hand on the $1,000 yeah. one. Now something to keep. That's, uh, that's an interesting notion. I, I, I like that they're, they're sharing this kind of information because it's not something that you definitely, you, you get out of like a spec sheet. Um, when, when you're looking at a sword and it's it's nuanced information that's kind of only brought out by by trial by fire right um but if if the thousand dollar one is reverberating in the hand they they said they felt it when it's one-handed and it's <laughs> i've had handles like basically the nakago shatter the bottom half and i've still felt reasonably comfortable moving like the top half around uh because it doesn't shake so or the, the nodes don't tend to to be there so if, if they're really feeling a lot of shock in the hand um, that's, that's just a, I suppose, a surprising thing. And I wonder what's going on. I can't think of a great reason why it would do that. The other one feeling good though, it, it can be what I can't see necessarily is like blade profile. Could be that it has a little bit more meat on the blade. Could be that it has a little bit less, um, you know, one working on bottles and pool noodles suggests that one has a, a keener edge with a, a little, you know, kind of a little bit more of a hair popping edge and one cutting deeper into wood. I, I guess the hair popping edge would, would also do that, but generally speaking, uh, wider blades with kind of more meat on them tend to, to not necessarily sink as deep into, into wood. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Isn't there more hard metal higher up on a car door? I shoot a car door with a compound bow and the higher I shoot, the less deep it penetrated. It seemed, it seemed to hit the door. It could be. I am not familiar with the construction methodology of a car door. I'm sure the Society of Violence Against Pool Noodles is filing complaints as we speak. <laughs> I'm just speculating. There's no cool. It, it, may, it may well or may not. I'm not 100% sure you mention is these are both from the same manufacturer store and the blade geometry on both of them is identical mm -hmm. so it's not at least in examining the kasaki the blade geometry has some nuanced differences that are that are important the uh the crisper lines uh can can make a difference the swell in the kasaki the the way the the way one appears to be a little bit more uh tapered a little bit more quickly can make it harder to, to penetrate um I don't know exactly if the shinogi are the same. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. But some of those very subtle nuances can make a pretty big difference. How much, you, you know, if, if I'm getting in the weeds, which is is kind of par for the course here. If you take a caliper and measure a millimeter behind the edge, and there's you know uh, uh, a significant difference between the two, that that will have an impact on cutting as well. So even though they may look, you know, kind of visually very very similar. Uh, there can be pretty drastic differences in, in what they'll cut, how well they'll perform against various targets based on some very, very subtle differences in, in sharpening and other blade dynamics. That wasn't the factor. It's actually just come down to something like the construction method. Now, in terms of... And the steel. Oh, uh, yeah, of course, and the steel. Uh, we also have... I, I would think this would be less about the steel and more about the, the tempering or how much steel there is. One was notably lighter. Lighter swords tend not to have the same same authority in the cut. If they are the same as, as described, or at least the same length, the handles are the same, but one's lighter, there's less mass. It makes sense that it's it's maybe not gonna push as hard in the cut or or penetrate as deeply as, as a lighter sword would. But a differentially hardened blade uh, tends to favor edge retention, but it's also gonna bend. So on some of those targets where you're throwing it out there, the, the shock in the sword, the sword rattles and kind of springs back to shape as where the differentially hardened one might, you know, 
slump over a little bit. They they certainly could take shock a little differently, but I don't I don't honestly know how much they do or don't. I I, I couldn't really tell you what the the difference feeling wise would be to the user in in encountering a target where you where the blade absorbs the shock between differentially hardened blade and a hard I would say the differentially hardened blades they certainly bend. And I want to say I feel less in my hands, but that that might be wishful thinking on my part. I, I guess I don't know for sure. I want to try one of these. Like, I have some fit and finish time. to talk about here. Yes. So in terms of the fit and finish of swords like these, they all are mass manufactured parts. They all come from places like China. Yeah. They're not very expensive. So to see like the same Hibaki on a $300 sword versus $1,000, oh, it's kind of disappointing. And I is. like this Hibaki. I actually like this one. But you don't want to see that. You don't want to see Very true. I'm glad he's calling out Hibaki too, because I find that the Hibaki tends to be have fewer options and you see the same things. Even the what look like uh, different versions tend to start feeling the same after a while. And there's very few companies that put out like different looking Hibaki. And so uh, I, I too would like to see different Hibaki, particularly in like the Zazzy swords to, to make it feel even even that much Zazzier see something you've spent a lot of money on on a cheap version of the same thing yeah now in terms of the 300 dollars sword we're going to get some b-roll here but the wrap is actually starting to come undone it's very ah. loose here and you can actually start to push down some of the wrap here that's not a good so if that happens um I've, I've talked about this in the past but you can take some lacquer from home depot and then throw some tape on the other parts of the fittings and just spray the you know get, apply liberally i guess i'll say from a spray can anyway and the lacquer will absorb into the the silk or whatever material it happens to be and lock it down a little bit and you can you can get a little bit more mileage out of it but if the the ito is moving around on the handle and making these gaps that you start to see here th that's bad um, it does suggest that it's not going to hold up for a very long time but it it also has an impact just on your use it's not that it like is going to fall apart and then you're going to feel it as you're holding on to it, you'll feel the blade kind of shift and like rock in your hand a little bit. Like you'll feel like you're holding on to, you know, like a taco that's falling apart or something. Like so it, it just gives you a sensation that you're not in full control of the weapon. And what that will then do in use is either A, make you uncomfortable or B, make you uncomfortable and really white knuckle. You'll know, just kind of really hold on. And then that leads to fatigue and makes it you know, harder to train for longer periods and makes you exhausted quicker. Good sign. On this one, it's still very, very tight. So that's a win for the $1,000 Katana. But then we come into things like uh, the fit and finish and we have rattly parts. Oh. Now, this has, the $300 Katana, has developed some rattly parts, especially... Before they, they had it with flowers and now there's just this gob of shit. <laughs> before, before they... I, I, I don't know if this is intentional. But like before they showed the thousand dollar sword with like the little flower blossoms and stuff. And now it's just sitting next to a pile of bird shit. Uh, <laughs> it just makes the cinematography well done. I'm well, not sure who's filming. It has filming developed some rattly parts, especially the Suba. But comparatively, it's nothing. Like there is the tiniest yeah. bit of rattle, but with the thousand dollar one, you can feel the rattle. You can feel the tang vibrating. The Suba is just vibrating around. It's, it's not. Let it's me not. Now, now, in fairness, I would say both the issues that they encountered are fixable. I would, uh, uh, I would say though that the Suba is easier to fix than the the Rattly Nakago and less severe. Put it nice. this way, I am at the point where I think the thousand dollar katana is no longer safe to use. It I, I disagree with Tyrant on this one, I, and uh, let me let me stop myself there. As the user of the sword, if you're not comfortable using a sword. Awesome. Don't don't do it. And he's got more experience with that sword than I do. I'm a, a keyboard ninja over here, not qualified. I'm like watching something and saying it. I could be totally off base. But if, if the reason that he's saying it's not safe is because he feels the Nakago rattling, um, it, it'd be worthwhile to like make sure the Mikugi are are still still in there and good. But it, it's fair to say after whacking a two by four and you know coming home from the battle that you'd want to disassemble, clean, make sure everything's sound as a pound uh you could wrap a little paper around it replace any any makugi that might look suspicious uh, or have diminished and then the the sword is is uh, you know good to go again um it's also unlikely that both i'm suspecting it has two makugi it'd be unlikely that one of them failed and even less likely that both of them failed uh, i adventure i guess that that nakago slapping around is just a uncomfortable 
thing. And it's it's not good. I'm not excusing it or saying that that's an okay thing for a thousand dollar sword to have. But I I wouldn't if I were testing it based on what I've seen, I, I'd still feel okay moving it around. Though I would wear headgear and something around my my neck if I proceeded to smash things harder. Bird poop smells <laughs> spells sells like violence if it if it bled it led. I don't get it. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Herp derp. If the wood gives it away, it would feel better because you're not having all of the energy returned back to you. It would it wouldn't put much into the wood test without consistent wood. That's fair in terms of I, I don't know that I put as much stock into it as they would as a comparison. If they were cutting, but maybe they were cutting into the same log and they're just assuming that that I'm seeing it and I'm not, but it, it could well be that they were cutting into the same two by four that's been in the same place and exposed to the same elements. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, cool test and reviews. I was wondering if you can have a budget Wakazashi recommendations. Prefer ones that have at least a nine inch handle. Uh, I, I'm not sure inherently on handle length and stuff, but I would say that Wakazashi wise, I've gotten one from Jeku not too long ago. I did a review on it. They allowed some customization options. I thought it was pretty cool. Wakazashi. Uh, yeah. If I mean, I guess depending on how far down the rabbit hole you want to go, if you're, if budget is, is not really a concern, then uh, I've been looking a lot at Rado sword, sword recently. He's a, a Smith. I can't remember out of the Czech Republic. Maybe I'm not a hundred percent sure. Anyway, um, make some pretty cool stuff. If you want something a little bit more bespoke, handmade uh and I, I, yeah he posted some swirly mitsudome fittings that have me very enamored uh motohara is also always excellent as well i don't know that they make wakazashi a lot but i'm sure they could so those would be some things worthy of consideration it is genuinely at a point where the tang is rattling around inside the handle uh the pins may have broke or well, at least one of the pins may have broken or deformed at the very least it needs to be pulled apart yeah. and fixed and refit so pulled apart and maintained, I think is, it's semantics here, but pulled apart and maintained. If your Japanese swords are meant to come apart, there's a little bit more maintenance. That That's kind of part of signing up for them, right? Um, if, if you have one of them, that's just a, a thing you have to do. Uh, and so I, I don't, it's fair to say fixed, but um, at, at the same time, I would I would say what they're doing is a little bit more akin to maintenance than repair, but it certainly walks that line. Fit and finish, yeah. And then in you, either way, good on them for calling out that, like, hey, this is a safety issue, and uh, those are the steps to be done. I'm not, I'm not trying to to throw shade at them. I think they're, I like that they're adding these kind of things and saying, like, hey, this should be repaired, and you shouldn't just go out and like try to whack hard things in your backyard when you suspect there could be an issue because it is, it is a safety concern. Then with the three hundred dollar one, it's still really well. The the blade is still, yeah. it didn't take a set. It hasn't got any chipped edges. Uh, the worst we're getting is a little bit of a rattly suba. And but that's nothing. You get that on most any swords, Western, Eastern, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But I mean, this is why here at Shadowversity in a lot of different places, when people start talking about homogenous steel, they're all in for it. It's just, it is a, most of the time, it is a better quality steel and a better option for when you're going for, for swords. Yes, the $1,000 katana does have no, a nicer blade. Mm. This is true, and we've all said this. However, after these tests, this, this $300 katana is actually still quite usable. Now, we can get into, like, uh, personal preference on looks. Like, I don't like the look <laughs> of the $300 one. Uh, but... Or even feel like, but like, you come to the Saya, and it feels like the Monty, but at the same time, like, the feel of it is almost kind of nice. Well, Almost. This is a personal preference. Like your pleasure, it, but the feel of it, I actually like for tactical purposes. <laughs> oh, tactical. It, yeah, it has a lot of grip on it. Okay, it does, and I don't mind the like turtle shell look here as well. So there is some aesthetic things that we can take into consideration, but function over form. I really feel like the three hundred dollar just out outdid yeah. the thousand dollar one. Even if the the thousand dollar one seemed to really get the the edge right at the end. The one that we have right here in front of us. The one that we have received from katanasword.com. But well, we've received this one mm. now because we've had some problems with people. Good, good on Tyrant for calling this out. Like we've received this one. Um, it, it's, I do, I don't know how how much emphasis he puts in it, but like, 
there's a lot of variation with these swords and uh, you may get a great one, you may get a dud. And Shadowversity is a really big channel uh, that talks about swords. There's there's not a lot of channels with a million plus subscribers that talk about swords. And so it, in the back of your mind, you're always wondering like, did they send them the kind of cream of the crop or, uh, you know, is this just something that would be off the shelf? And in fairness, generally, while I haven't dealt with the manufacturer that they're they're working with, most of the time I, I have it in good, I, I, I believe that the vendors just kind of pull something off the shelf and, and, <laughs> and send it uh, rather than like personally review it to, to look at if it's the best or not. Um, but it is nevertheless still one example. There can be a lot of variation. They might've gotten a really good one. They might've gotten a bad one. And that's a, a valid point in calling out when you're talking about any review. At least we receive, you know, fit and finish issues on other katanas when they buy, or not just other katanas, other swords when they buy from the same manufacturers. So, I'm going to say, with the $300 katana that we've received here, it's actually not bad. And I think it sort of puts up the point that if $300 is your budget, you can get a really nice sword, even $200 sometimes. Yeah. So, not always do you need to go for the $1,000 sword, and not always is does the thousand dollar sword hold up to every test you're going to put it in so i think at the end of the day it depends what you're really looking for the thousand dollar katana is what i would consider a, bit a functional piece yes you can use it to cut it was going to it's going to be structurally sound for the most part unless you're putting it up so as a wall hanger something to display it's beautiful it is because it's more than a wall hanger it definitely has a full tang it can survive a little bit of damage but what <laughs> On top of that, they're talking about two examples from one manufacturer and what the, the extra $700 difference or $800 difference gets you between the two. Um, your mileage may vary depending on, on which vendor uh, and, and where you buy it and whatnot. But generally speaking, m the more you spend can get you exotic steels that are debatably done correctly or not and a little bit of an upgrade in fit and finish. Sometimes, though in this case, it doesn't seem... By, by a large margin um, and it can get you some like other features like folded steel or laminated steel or a better polish but if those things are not meaningful to you and they don't they don't resonate with you with how you define quality because you're you know if you're very performance driven I, I would say that if you watch this video you're you're not going to be particularly compelled to buy a thousand dollar sword and and I think it, it demonstrates that accurately and well that a thousand dollar sword and the three hundred dollar sword have a lot more in common from a performance perspective, and debatably the three hundred dollar one is 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 going to perform uh, in some ways better. So I I think if you're if you're defining better as in strictly performance and resilience and standing up to shock and holding up to dumb dumb things, then uh, then I'd, I'd agree with kind of what what the results are showing here, and that that's been my experience too. Less expensive swords that are typically through hardened offer a better value and often more shock resistance, more, more performance in terms of resilience and uh, and ability to, to do dumb cuts than their differentially hardened, folded, uh, very, very artistically themed uh, counterparts. Once it takes a bit of damage, I would actually do the $300 recommendation for those who want to get into practicing cutting. Because I think as long as you don't do anything too destructive, something like this, if this is within your price range, it's actually really good to start with. Yeah. I'd suggest the $50 sword. I, I, I mentioned it earlier. I reviewed it. That's a great way to get the dumb out of your system. But certainly save money, get the dumb out of your system for less, and then uh, learn from, from that experience. Pay your tuition. Learn from the experience of, of breaking a sword, doing dumb things with it, learning what scratches, what bends, uh, and also what you like and don't like. Buying a sword that you're, you're, isn't your forever sword, isn't, isn't the last one that you're going to buy. Uh, is is not necessarily a bad thing. And you can learn a lot about how long do you want it to be? Uh, what what do you like? What don't you like? What did you think you would like and, and hated? All of those things can be very useful before you fork out a much more substantial amount of money on, on a, you know, a thing that in all likelihood you've never gotten a chance to actually hold in your hands until you fork over the money and wait.
But I think that's going to finish us out for today. We genuinely hope you enjoyed. You can support us on Player, uh, Subscribe Star. We have YouTube memberships activated. And we also I'm have Patreon, of course. You can support us there for $1 to $5. It helps us make this sort of content. Give them the uh, money. We love making it, and we hope you enjoy it. And we thank you, uh, KatanaSword.com, for sending us these review samples. Uh, we put them through their paces. We did. Would you like to take us out, Nate? Yeah, because I think that there could be another test that we could do with this $1,000 sword, which is we always hear the long sword versus this katana trope and we're always told the katanas we're not using aren't proper katanas and this is a proper katana well luckily for you we've already done that there's yeah. a video here on shadowversity <laughs> all right i'm gonna uh i'm gonna stop the video there i think it's funny that the video was 21 minutes and 42 seconds long i didn't run it all the way through and my stream has been going for an hour and 40 minutes so with all of my blabbering i managed to stretch the video <laughs> <laughs> stretch the video out for near two hours well done hopefully um you folks found some benefit in my blabbering i'm this was actually kind of fun i don't honestly i don't like react videos typically but watching it and then pausing talking through some of the things and thoughts uh, i found to be helpful i have to find a balance between like the comments and and uh watching it and reacting to it and talking about it. I don't know. Was it useful? I'm not sure. It was fun to watch the video. I like Shad's content and I, I liked talking through it, um, I guess. Hopefully hopefully it was cool. I'm not sure. Trying new stuff. We'll see uh, if if it's worth doing. If, if you guys like it, then uh, next time there's a cool, fun, sword-related video, this might be the way to do it. In the past, I've, I've done response videos uh, to Shad, to Matt Easton, to, to other folks, but you know, editing them and talking and I don't know, it's just a little bit more of a production if you, if I, if I do that stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, as I, as I close up some, some thoughts, uh, having seen the whole video now, I, I would say that like being from one manufacturer, if I think about the two to $300 sword that was there, it didn't seem like a particularly great example of a two to three hundred dollar sword if the fittings are a bother uh, i recall an example from hanban sword that had uh kind of a, a a lovely what looked like a water jet cut out iron or metal suba that looked a lot better and some some fittings that were cast on japanese style fittings and ito that was tighter and it was two hundred dollars i made a review on that as well it was from hanban forge and i thought the fittings were pretty nice uh the blade was i think a little lighter but uh very similar and also 200 bucks. So I would say you you can get a better value or a, a nicer sword for $200 than the example that I've, I haven't held it in my hand. So I, I can't say that for sure, but based on what I'm seeing in the video and for a thousand dollars, I think, I don't know that you're going to necessarily get a sword that performs better, but you can get swords that might be a little bit more feature rich in your area. There was uh there's swords from Huawei, for example, uh, that, are around a thousand dollars that are, are probably going to be put together a little bit better. Also have a differentially hardened blade and, and probably be a, a little bit nicer. There's uh, a sword from Zise as well. I tested one of them and it had a little bit more character. I would say, I don't think it's more durable. It's probably less durable than the example that they sent. And it was not differentially folded, but I think it had some, some cooler and more unique features. And I think either one of the, uh, the gentlemen that held it, Nate or Tyrant would probably be, uh, would probably like the Zise sword that was sent to me for review and they, they would probably get a kick out of it. So the, the examples that they have are, are limited by that, that manufacturer. And if you take the, you know, what you might actually want to spend your money on and, and compare those two swords, uh, you, you may, you may see similar or different results. So I think it would probably make the same point in that, uh, an inexpensive sword from through hardened steel is, is probably going to be a better value for most people that want to whack shit in their backyard or just have fun with a sword. <laughs> and I, I don't think their, their point is, is wrong on that one. Uh, all right. Um, he has a less expensive sword. It's less expensive swords rather than what I, I'm missing some stuff. Uh, Ronan Katana and Amazon some places. I'm not sure. Is that a sword store? Very cool stream. Glad you liked it. Uh, 
I'll go Ronan Katana. Just need to recover from the recent folding knife. Spending $300 just last week. I hope you enjoy your knife. Ronan is a cool brand, decent price, decent blade. So Ronan, uh, I think Shadowversity has tested some Ronan Katana swords, maybe. Not 100% sure. But uh, the Ronan Katana Dojo Pro is around 400 bucks, And I have a number of videos pushing them to failure. And they are very durable pieces. Some people say that the Ito is very tight on their swords. I've gotten examples, though admittedly many of them have been from swords that I purchased either secondhand or swords that were from the kind of scratch and dent bin that were sent as review samples. And the Ito has not been super tight on the Dojo Pro examples that I've, I've seen, but a, a spray of lacquer would tighten that up. And the blades themselves have been great and uh, really been real pain in the asses to break uh, for, for the money. They tend to be very solid. And the last one that I got with the Swirly Mitsudome was not as hard to break, but it felt quite a bit more refined than the other Ronin Katanas that I've that I've tested. It felt really good and cut really, really well, and it was a very nice sword. If you just want to have backyard fun, ideally you want spring steel like 5160. Uh, 5160, 1060... S7, if it's a zombie apocalypse, I think all of those are certainly applicable. Uh, but through hardened is is usually the the name of the game. Forgiving adaptable. It's also pretty affordable. If you buy from our Sami, just let him know my name. He will take a special. <laughs> you got the 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 ins with Samurai Bird. Uh, so I'm gonna call it here. It's been an hour and 45 minutes to talk through and react to a 20 minute video. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to stop here. I want to thank everyone for joining. Uh, please check the link in the description and watch the video on Chad's channel. If you watched it here, I do, I do feel a little bad about playing a whole video. Hopefully the extra hour and <laughs> 30 minutes that I, that I added onto the video, make it transformative in nature. But uh, anyway, hopefully it was, it was fun. Thanks to Chad for making this kind of content. I love that he's making more sword-related content. Please check out his channel and support sword community fun stuff. And thanks to everyone that was over here and talking in the chat and uh, keeping things lively and joining the stream. I, I had fun talking through it. I've got cotton mouth now, but I'm going to stop. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, and thanks for watching.